Hi folks, it's Monday evening. I am here with you, Mayor Victoria Garrity, and I have several things to give you in a quick update this evening. Um, and in fact, if you're waiting for my email, some people actually tell me that they expect it in the morning and it, as since coronavirus has hit, it has definitely not ever gotten to you in the morning uh, with my house full of people and students. Um, it's, oh, it's always late in the day and today it's gonna be later than ever, but I'll give you some highlights of what I was going to talk about as well as a few other things. Uh, the big news is that um, on Friday, uh, five of the 10 regions that New York State is divided into have began their phase reopening. We are in the Mid-Hudson region. We are not one of the regions that is experiencing the phased reopening having started yet. And in fact, we have a few matrices to go, a few of the benchmarks that we still need to reach. Um, one of those that we had a pass on, that we had a a pseudo check mark on what had to do with the um, contact tracing and having enough contact tracers. So uh, if you are interested in getting some work, uh, there are opportunities for people to be hired by uh, to work as contact tracers. And that is, um, I, I've shared that link before, but I will share that link again. Um, the other two categories have to do with the number of deaths that happen in a hospital. We need to have 14 days of a decline of that. And unfortunately, we saw a spike last week. And so we're now only on day three of 14. So we have at least 11 days to go. Meanwhile, uh, we have seen progress in the right direction for the number of new hospitalizations. That number needs to get down below two. We are now at 2.02. Um, the only district uh, region that is um, has a higher rate of, of us than that category is in Long Island. So now we technically only have four of seven of the check marks that we need to get. So we need to increase our contact tracers, we need to uh, decrease the number of hospitalizations, and we need to continue to decrease the number of um, deaths in, uh, that happen in hospitals. Obviously, we want to do those things anyway, uh, not just because it will lead to the phase reopening. Every time we talk about these numbers, we have to remember that the number of deaths on any given day is that many families that have lost a loved one. And it's getting to be harder and harder to be able to bring these rate of transmission down. And why is that? Because it's gorgeous outside and people want to go outside. Plus, there are actual things that are reopening statewide that are going to encourage people to be able to be outside. Um, golf opened in a couple of the county courts a couple of weeks ago. Tennis is opening or will be opening soon in some places. Drive-in movie theaters are opening. Um, landscaping can be happening. So each time we have one an additional thing that uh, invites people to be in more contact with each other, we are also in inherently increasing the chance of transmission. And that means we need to be even more vigilant about maintaining social distancing, about washing and sanitizing our hands, and about wearing a mask every time you can't maintain at least six feet distance between yourself and someone else. So it may mean that you can go out in the woods and have a beautiful hike with your family, and maybe you don't need to wear your mask most of the time, but please have a mask in your pocket or a kerchief around your neck so that when you do encounter someone, you're able to protect them Really, when you put the face covering on, you're really protecting someone else um, in case you yourself are a carrier and don't realize it. And that is what we all have to see as the new normal, because if it's hot wearing a mask. So people started realizing that last week as we hit even 80 degrees. It's, it's not that pleasant to be wearing a mask all the time. So we're going to need to find more ways to keep space between each other. But we're also going to have to be that much more committed to maintaining the social distance, wearing a mask when we can't maintain that distance, and constantly be washing and sanitizing our hands to reduce the spread. If the rate of transmission does not go down, then we will not have a phase reopening, or we will actually go backwards in our phase reopening planning. That's not what anybody wants, not from a healthcare perspective, not from a business perspective, not from getting back to some sense of normalcy where we get to see other people in real life. So it's not a matter of where you stand on the political spectrum or what your feeling is about the governor or the president or anybody else. Uh, whatever motivates you to wear a mask or to keep your distance or to stay home or to wash your hands or to sanitize your hands, please, please find it within yourself to comply with all of these rules. It's, uh, it, it's for every, all of those reasons and more. Um, 
there are a couple of um, things that you should be getting in the mail. Uh, the other day, we got our federal stimulus check in our household anyway. Uh, the U.S. House then passed the next stimul uh, stimulus bill. I'm not sure if something happened with the Senate today. I've been a little out of the, uh, the media loop. Um, that would bring some significant uh, funding to state and local governments um, and uh, as well as some, some other big programs. Um, the governor acknowledged that summer camp guidelines are still up in the air, which means that we on a local level um, still haven't made any definitive uh, plans for uh, any type of camp or summer programming. A lot of that's up in the air, and it's been further complicated by this Kawasaki-like uh, it, it disease or infection that is impacting children. We thought that children were largely uh, untouched by the coronavirus and now we're finding that if the, it, the other day there were as many as 120 cases of children experiencing this inflammatory illness uh, that seems to be prompted by the coronavirus and we're just just learning about that for as little as as much as we know about the coronavirus we've had that for a few months this kawasaki like uh, symptoms um, virus that is related that is impacting children we've literally known about days and weeks so there's there's lots to learn about that but obviously that further complicates decision making about programs that involve children, whether that's our summer camp or even going back to school in the fall and what that's going to look like. Um, so as much as there is these frustrating unknowns, um, there is some exciting news about things that are opening up somewhere near us. Uh, now, the, the regions that have opened up and that are then the next round likely to open up are not downstate. It's not the Mid-Hudson region. It's not New York City. It's not Long Island. We are the three regions that are the furthest from being able to have that phase reopening. As I said, we're at least 11 days away. Long Island is at least nine days away. There are a couple of days ahead of us. And that's only if we don't go backwards on our... Um, uh, a rate of deaths in hospitals. So um, fingers crossed for all the reasons that we talked about, that we keep seeing progress in the right direction. And I hope that you will do everything that you can to help keep down that rate of transmission. Alrighty. Um, there's so much more I could talk about. Uh, I think tomorrow uh, we'll talk about the other things you should be receiving in the mail sometime soon, which is a ballot, an actual ballot to vote in the school budget and school board election, which is happening on June 9th. The election day is June 9th, but you actually have to have your ballot mailed before that so that it can be counted on June 9th. And that is a different process than we're going to have for any Democrats who are voting in the primary on June 23rd. Uh, and I'll go into detail tomorrow about um, why those two processes are different and what are the differences. But the first thing to be looking for is look in the mail. You should be getting information about the school budget and school board vote members vote that's happening June 9th. You should be getting an actual ballot in the mail. Take a look at it. If you need to do some research as you make your decisions, do that and mail it back right away so that your vote can be counted. And then the June 23rd primary that any of us who are registered Democrats will be experiencing. And I don't think there are any other um, primaries happening on June 23rd, but that's the majority of uh, voters in in Austin are registered as Democrats. So that's a, thousands of us. Um, that's a slightly different process, um, but we'll talk about that in more detail, de more detail tomorrow. And maybe we'll even have something in the mail by then. My mail comes late in the day. Maybe I've even gotten something today and haven't seen it yet. So I look forward to checking that out with you. Have a lovely evening. Be well.